Today, Jesus foretells a dual betrayal by people who are very important in his inner circle. These are leaders among the disciples. Judas was not an ordinary disciple. He was the minister of finance. He was the treasurer of the disciples. So he was given that responsibility because there was something special about him. You can even say he was one of those that were, in a way, close to Jesus, just by the fact of being given that responsibility, which could have been given to anybody else, but it was given to Judas. We know very well that Simon Peter was the elder of, uh, among the disciples, but also kind of a head, a leader among them, or the chairperson of the Twelve. And so he too was not an ordinary disciple. He had a special responsibility because he was also occupying a special place in the heart of Jesus. Now, these are the very ones that would be his traitors. Sometimes we might find ourselves in the position that Jesus is, is in today, where we suffer at the hands of the people that we trust, people that we love genuinely, people that have been close to us. Sometimes we find ourselves in that situation. But when Jesus suffers at the hands of the people that are close to him, he doesn't fight back. He doesn't even recount the good things that he has done with them and for them. And he doesn't allow that do or betrayal to distract him from the mission. He knows that all this has to happen for a mission to be accomplished. And the mission that has to be accomplished is that he has to save humanity. And all these stages are necessary for him to reach at that destination. As Christians, we too have a mission to accomplish. And for us to get there, there are certain things that we have to experience. Sometimes we have to go through moments of joy. Other times, it is not moments of joy, but pain. There's a mission that we have to accomplish to participate in the saving mission of Christ in our own way. And that is not an easy mission at all. We have our own matters that had to go through their own suffering for them to accomplish what they accomplished. You and I might not die as they did. We might not be crucified as Jesus was crucified, but certainly we too might have to carry our, our own cross in one way or another. So what is our response or our approach towards the people that betray us from whom we do not expect any, any betrayal? What is our response to them? Do we fight back? Do we recount the many good things that we have done with them and for them? Jesus doesn't do that. He gives us an example of accepting everything because there's a bigger mission that has to be accomplished. And the mission that has to be accomplished is, is for us to arrive at that destination, saving humanity, participating in the salvation of the human race. But before we, we get there, we need to ask for, for grace from God because we are not Jesus ourselves. We are human beings with our own limitations. Jesus certainly was fully human, but he was at the same time fully divine. And so, because of that, it was easier for him even to, to go through all these without getting distracted. But ourselves, we get distracted when we go through such painful experiences. And many times we even give up and we don't manage reaching our destination. And so we have to pray for God's grace, for us to be able to hold ourselves when we, we meet moments, especially of betrayal, from the people that we have genuinely loved, the people that have been very close to us. We need God's grace to hold ourselves for us to be able to go through this pain. And we pray today that indeed God may give us this grace. It is a necessary grace that we need for us to reach our destination, and our destination is that we participate in the salvific mission of Christ for humanity. Amen.